Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God Dungeon Guide video. Last time we took a look at the Mad Lab, and now today we are looking at the Candyland Hunting Grounds, which is actually a very odd dungeon. It really knows how to set itself apart from the others. The Candyland Hunting Grounds, or just Candyland for short, or Sea Land, or whatever floats your jiggly butt, can only be dropped by one enemy, and that is the Candy Gnome. He's a little orange dude who very rarely spawns in Midlands and runs away from players while occasionally stopping, meaning if you don't have enough speed to catch up with him, you ain't getting jack. And even if you do catch up to him and kill him, the Sea Land isn't even guaranteed. But hey, at least you got some gumballs. Yay. Now the first thing you'll notice whenever you enter the Candy Land is just how bright and colorful this place is. Like I know the Sprite World had a lot of colors too, with the red and the blue and the rainbow and the But the Candy Land is literally just one solid shade of pink with other shades of pink inside of it, like how they even do that? The other thing that you'll notice is that you don't have a boss quest. In fact, the boss hasn't even spawned yet. So how then, do you make the boss of this dungeon spawn? You must kill a minion. And whatever boss corresponds to that same minion type, will spawn. For instance, if you kill a unicorn, a gigacorn will spawn. But here's the catch, guys. You can keep on doing this. You can keep on killing minions and spawning bosses infinitely. They never run out. There is no end of the Candyland. It goes on literally forever. The dungeon ends when you say it ends, or if you get disconnected for some reason, just let that sink in for a moment. Infinite bosses means infinite loot, infinite fame, infinite chances for a white bag, infinity. As long as you keep on playing, you can get infinite loot, as much as you can hold. This lone factor makes the Candyland one of the best dungeons for loot. Simply because if you have infinite chances for loot, that means you are practically guaranteed to get everything if you persist long enough. You want that white bag? Keep on playing until you get it. You never have to leave. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't mean that you will get the white bag quickly or even get a boss to spawn quickly because everything in the Candyland is based on RNG. Just because you killed a minion doesn't necessarily mean that a boss will spawn. And just because you kill a boss all by yourself doesn't necessarily mean you'll even get loot. Everything is random based on chance. And it's because of that that this dungeon can take you a very long time to get anywhere. In fact, if you want the Candyland to be the best experience that it can be, bring a group of friends and for the love of God, bring ranged classes. I know it might sound weird, but I had two Candyland keys. I did one on my Paladin and one on my Archer, and the one with my Archer was significantly more plentiful and fun. In fact, if you bring a team of just Archers, you can literally destroy these bosses in seconds. But before I talk about the bosses, let's go over those enemies. There are a total of six different enemies within the Candyland. Just kidding, there's actually eight. I guess Realm I just didn't seem to care about including the ice cream and hard candy enemies, because I guess they were just that insignificant. And I agree, they're kind of just there. Eh. But for the first of the main enemies, we have the Wishing Troll, who's actually one of the most dangerous ones. It's got a hexing boomerang that deals 70 damage, all while making you hallucinate for 3 seconds, on top of a 150 damage AoE. My advice? Circle around the enemies. Or if you have the range, just take them out from afar. That's always a good solution. Next up, we've got the Cream Puffs, and do not let the name nor the look of these enemies fool you. They are surprisingly fast and can actually deal quite a bit of damage. The Big Cream Puff is your standard enemy, but the Little Cream Puff has the ability to slow you, so do your best to avoid that one. Try to clear the little ones as fast as you can and then move on to the big one. Then of course we've got the roto to purple thing who's your standard enemy, it's slow, but the tiny rototos are actually a lot more deadly because they have a very EP-esque shot, meaning all of their bullets fire from within and outward. Meaning if they sit on you, which they will try to do, they can pop you like that. So try and make it a priority to avoid the minions before the big guy. Then of course we have the staple unicorn enemy, who's definitely the most aggressive of the bunch. It'll alternate between just wandering around and charging at enemies, use this charging opportunity as a way for you to back up and just let it kind of walk to you while you fire at it. It's a good way for the player to remain in control of the battle and lure the enemy where you want it to be. Other than that, it's a very simple enemy, not too challenging. It hits hard, so beware of that. But as long as you're moderately coherent, it shouldn't give you much trouble. But ultimately, we have the fairies, and uh, these just suck. The beefy fairy isn't the hardest thing to deal with, not by any means, since it just has this one shot that can confuse you, which, yeah, that sucks, but it's not that hard to avoid. It's the minions that get in the way. You're starting to notice a pattern 
pattern here, do yourself a favor and just attack this thing from afar. If you're melee class, you may just have to take some damage or suffer some confusion. Like I said, focus down the minions, then go for the big guy. If you can lure the minions away from the big one, that's the best option you have. And finally, we have the gumball machine, who's not so much an enemy as much as it is a destructible item. It doesn't attack you, and once you kill it, it has the chance to drop a gumball or some rock candy, which I'll be sure to go over whenever I'm talking about loot. So overall, we have a very colorful cast of enemies. I love them all aesthetically. They're all cool. Some of them are a little dad annoying, like I said, the fairies, but I really like the variety here. Now that the enemies are out of the way, let's crack our knuckles and dive right into these boss fights. The unicorn's parallel is the Gigacorn, which is basically just a giant unicorn. Holy sh- I would say that this is the second hardest boss, only because there are so many shots, and it will, like the unicorns, occasionally charge you. Now there are two main battle methods I have for you. First, if you have enough speed, you can circle around the unicorn while firing until the boss is killed. Since the Gigacorn's shots are on a bit of a delay, it will never truly be able to keep up with you and you can just keep on circling until it's dead. But that's only if you have enough speed. The second and more traditional method is to walk right up to the Gigacorn, fire, and then right before it starts charging at you, backpedal to avoid its shots all while damaging it until it's killed. But if you took my advice and brought a ranged character, this should not be a problem for you. Next up we have the Desire Troll, and I think it's safe to say that this is the deadliest boss. Almost every bullet deals a minimum of 100 damage. One of the AoEs goes up to 200. Jesus! And in addition to being hexed, you'll also be stunned, meaning you can't attack the boss. You have to wait. I tried doing the circling method against this one, and it was it was a little finicky. Sometimes it worked, but there were times where I did get hit by the bullets because I was a melee class. Ranged characters absolutely have the advantage in this fight. Melees are gonna have to do a lot of weaving in between projectiles, and taking damage will be near impossible to avoid. Just do a lot of moving around. Try and keep on the move. Third, we have the spoiled cream puff, who still packs a punch but ironically doesn't slow you. Here's the funny thing though, it only has 1200 health. I don't really think I need to walk you through this one. The way that you fight him is the same way that you fight the cream puffs, just now you got a bigger one and he's even weaker somehow. I don't get it. Then you've got a mega who actually has like a freaking flamethrower for a shotgun. Look at the, what the? So try to move back and forth and fake out the shots. He does have a brief period where he stops his flamethrower and just does some standard shots. So if you have to, you can wait until that phase begins and use that as your opportunity to deal damage if you want to play it safe. And ultimately we have the swole fairy. What a name. It's basically a giant beefy fairy. I mean, there's not really much I can say about that. It still has the ability to confuse you as well as the minions, but I find this boss to be ironically easy. I feel like it leaves itself wide open a lot. So I think you can take this one on with your wits. Also, I didn't mention this earlier, but you can actually stack bosses. Say you kill a unicorn, then a rototo, then a cream puff. The gigacorn then spawns and then you leave. The mega rototo has a chance to spawn after you leave the room because I didn't mention this either, but whenever you're inside of the boss room or if if anyone's in there, bosses will not spawn. Invisible rogues don't count. So if you think that you're safe being all cloaked in the very center of the room, nah, you're you're done. But if you don't feel like painstakingly killing enemies, going to the room, killing more enemies, going back, you can actually just farm up enemies over and over and over, and whenever you feel like you've had your fill, you can go to the boss room. And once you leave the room, the next boss that has its chance will spawn, without you needing to kill any more enemies. However, this method is slightly unreliable, since again, this entire dungeon is completely random. I've only gotten a maximum stack of like four, so make that what we will. As for the drops of interest, we have a defense, attack, and wisdom potion, the defense being dropped by the swole fairy and spoiled cream puff, the attack by the desire troll, spoiled cream puff, and gigacorn, and the wisdom by the desire troll, swole fairy, and gigacorn. The wine cellar incantation is dropped by all five, and the gumballs rock Rock candy and candy ring are all dropped by the five bosses in addition to the gumball machines. Gumballs are a nifty and quite common little item that can temporarily increase one of your six main stats by eight. So if you want to pop one of these right before fighting a boss, go right ahead. The rock candy is a very unorthodox item. Upon consumption, it'll spawn a bunch of explosions. So I guess if you want to pop this in a room full of enemies or right before the boss, go right ahead. And the candy ring is also a very odd item. It gives you plus 10 vitality and speed, but minus 100 mana and wisdom. So I guess, you know, you can put this on if 
you want to rush something, if your class doesn't require much mana, or if you just don't have a better ring. All five bosses also drop the white bag of the dungeon, which is the candy-coated armor, which is definitely an item that I like. I know some people don't care for it since it gives you 30 defense but minus 10 dexterity, but I still think it looks cool enough to the point where I'm glad I have one. I still have it, right? Oh shoot. Then of course we have the Swole Paladin set. Now I don't know much about these items, I do know about the Pixie Sword because I did a guide on it, but I can certainly tell you that it's not a bad set to have, not by any means. It may not be the best combination of items for a Paladin to wear, that's always debatable, but it's definitely a good set. The Sun Tarot card, if you care, is only droppable by the Swole Fairy and Gigacorn, and the Little Peppermint Candy Snail is droppable by all five. So like I said in the beginning, this is a phenomenal dungeon for getting loot. New players, if you have the opportunity to go into a sea land, don't trust a guy who's just calling out sea land in the chat, because we all know what's been going on. But if you do get a chance to do one, please take up the opportunity. Maybe soloing isn't exactly the route I would go. First of all, that's impressive if you could find a sea land by yourself. But if you can take a group of friends to do like, say, a guild sea land, it is entirely worth it. The fact that you have infinite bosses makes it entirely worth it. I know that a lot of people say that the cemetery is a great beginner's dungeon, and it is. Trust me, very plentiful. It's all around very beneficial for a new player. However, the Candyland trumps the cemetery simply for the sheer profusion of items and potions that you can get. It's a rare dungeon, that's for sure but it's entirely worth it. Anyhow, that is my complete guide to an extent of the Candyland Hunting Grounds. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. All right. See ya.